everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game News. It is May 20th, 2021 and these are the top stories of the day. To kick things off, on Twitter, Official Deep Silver had the following announcement. A new Deep Silver studio is coming. Free Radical Design. You asked and we listened. We have been working on plans to bring the Time Splitters franchise back to life and are pleased to let you know that we are setting up a new Deep Silver development studio to do just that. Free Radical Design is reforming and will be headed up by industry and Time Splitters veterans Steve Ellis and David Doak. This is an exciting first step in the process. Development on a new game has not yet started and we will update you when we have more news to share. This is cool. Time Splitters is a fun franchise. We haven't had a new entry in quite some time. I have some fond memories of playing Time Splitters back on GameCube, which is you know close to 20 years ago, and I'm welcoming back a new entry. Presumably, let's say this game gets its team together and starts development this fall. If that's the case, I could see the title perhaps coming out October 2024, right? A three year or so development cycle seems appropriate, maybe longer. At that point, you know, it's got a few years of Xbox Series X sales, PlayStation 5 sales to build up that user base of both consoles and then release probably for those two systems and hopefully be, be met well, both critically and in terms of the sales department. Also, got to imagine if they could put it on Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch Plus, they would want that because the Nintendo Switch install base is at 86 million, and by then it will be well over 100 million. If it could run on Nintendo Switch, sure, take advantage of it. If not, maybe on Plus. Heck, maybe by then, if it is an October 2024 title, that might be when Nintendo Switch 2 is coming out. You know, we don't yet know. This is a speculation for this second half of the announcement. Um, but it's interesting to see. If I were official Deep Silver and Free Radical Design was under my control of what platforms I would want Time Splitters to be on, I would try to have it on everything, you know. Don't lock it to one particular system. Release it on PC, release it on Xbox Series X, S, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch 2 or Nintendo Switch Plus or OG Switch if you can. But regardless of that speculation talk, it is fun just knowing that the team is coming back together and a new entry is coming forth because a fun old school feeling with modern sophistication first person shooter maybe in corridors and such uh, could be pretty welcomed plus we're also getting a new perfect dark although i feel that that perfect dark is going to be a lot different than the original released in 2000 may 22nd which is actually a couple days away but uh good time for first person shooters some old school stuff coming back moving on we got some Last of Us talk from a PlayStation one minute trailer drop. And this is regarding The Last of Us 2 having some enhanced features one more time. on the PlayStation 5 as part of a free update. You will never see me again. The game came out last year, was met with plenty of success by fans, by sales, by critics, receiving awards, as you saw there. It's getting enhanced resolution, 4K mode, targeted 60 frames per second. Free update, as I mentioned, coming out soon, just download it. It will be interesting to see how many people want to replay the game for the first time or pass. I meant to have a pause there. How many people want to replay the game, or how many people are going to play it for the first time? Uh, maybe you were waiting for it for now, you know, to hope that, hey, it's going to get some kind of update, and it does, so now's the time to do it. Um, or how many people just played it, but they're, ah, one and done, that's experience, satisfied them the first time around, and no need to dive back. Let me know what you think in the comments regarding The Last of Us 2 getting a PlayStation 5 update. And for that matter, let me know what you think about Deep Silver and Time Splitters. Were you a fan of the original games? Or are you going to hop in and be supportive of the new entry? I guess it depends on how good of a quality product it is, but uh, hopefully. 
it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts regardless. So thank you in advance. All right. Moving on into the final topic of the week. It is Thursday, so we got our Famitsu sales. This is for week 20 of 2021, which takes place from May 10th to May 16th, courtesy of Chris1964 over at the ResetEra.com forums. Thank you for putting this chart together nicely. Let's get to the talk. On the software side of things, number one spot is still Resident Evil Village, the PlayStation 4 version, with 35,045 copies sold for the week. That's down 68% from the previous week, but that's kind of to be expected for single-player, first-person shooter, story-driven games released on a console, and also this late into a system's life in Japan. So a respectable drop. Hopefully RE Village hangs in there. I imagine that, you know, it'll slowly work its way down the charts, but, you know, hopefully it just doesn't drop off suddenly. The PS5 version, on the other hand, is nowhere to be found in the top 10, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere in the top 30. Number two, Monster Hunter Rise for Nintendo Switch with 34,178 copies. Looking close at, looking close to hitting 2.2 million. That'll happen within a week. New Pokemon Snap at number three with 17,593, 211,000 total. Ring Fit Adventure at number four with 13,970 over 2.5 million which is awesome only a four percent drop you know this is the game that you're going to see stay high in the charts and with very small drops and in some cases a week increase over the previous week is just a really solid game lasting during the pandemic and beyond number five is momotaro Tentetsu, 2020's hit that came in in november with another 12,918 copies getting close to 2.2 million kind of like monster hunter rises Pretty awesome for both of those games. And number six, Famicom Detective Club for Nintendo Switch with 12,269. A smaller release, but the collector's edition was equivalent of like $100 for us. So uh, that's a respectable amount for a smaller game that costs more. Uh, I don't think it's going to do any earth shattering numbers in the weeks to come. Hopefully it enjoys a little life between digital and physical sales uh, hanging in there. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury at number 7 with 11,133. Getting close to three quarters of a million. Just physical, digital combined. They're looking at over a million right now. Number 8 is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. A title that just doesn't go away from 2017. Four years old now. Another 9,914 copies. 35% down from the previous week, 3.8 million total. This thing is hitting 4 million this year. Number nine, Minecraft on Nintendo Switch, 9,753 copies sold, getting close to 2 million total. And at number 10, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch at 6,997 copies sold, 4.2 million total physical alone. This is a, another Nintendo dominated week with nine pieces of software on Nintendo Switch one on PlayStation 4. If you looked in the top 30, which we don't have access to yet, you'll probably see more PS4 titles on there, possibly Resident Evil Village on PS5 hanging in to the top. But um, that remains to be seen when we do get that top 30 chart. And finally, on the hardware side of things, it's pretty exciting. Nintendo Switch, number one, no surprise. But the kind of surprise is that it did 95,411 units for the week. That's an increase of almost 25,000 from last week prior in Japan. It's a huge increase of almost 60,000 over last year's 38 for that same week. Nintendo Switch now is at 2.5 million in Japan for this year. Last year at this same spot, it was at 2.2 million. So you're looking at almost 300,000 units ahead is Nintendo Switch this year than last year for this same spot in time. And that's really impressive. And the other impressive thing is, it's now at 19,848,012 units sold life to date. The reason why that's a really important number is because it's very soon going to enter this very special club, which is the 20 million club in Japan. Depending on whose chart you go with, there are either four or five uh, systems that have hit 20 million or more in Japan life to date. 
DS is at number one with 32.86 million. Game Boy is at number two with 32.47 million. 3DS is at number three with 24.52 million and counting technically because you know we're still getting some more in there but it won't be a whole lot more. And number four is the PlayStation 2 with 21.99 million and that's it. However, if you look at Media Creates numbers, it does have one more, which would be the PSP at 20,166,133. If you don't use Media Create and you use Famitsu, which we're using Famitsu's chart right here, then PSP fell short with 19,690,000. So regardless, Nintendo Switch is going to enter this top five very soon or top four very soon. In fact, in two weeks, it will definitely sell through 152,000 or more. And when it does that, you're going to see it becoming the new fifth best selling system of all time officially in Japan. How high can it go? You know, by the end of this year, it could possibly top 3DS. If not, then I would say by April 1st of 2022, it will pass 3DS and be at that 25 million mark. And then that will make it officially the third best selling system of all time in Japan. Then you gotta look at it at like this. Can it hit the 30 million club? I think so, I don't see why not. If Nintendo sells through its 25 million for the year in Japan, oh, sorry, worldwide, and you look at it proportionally where that shipment is gonna go into Japan, the sales trajectory right now, you know, it will be somewhere in the 24 to 25 million category between, you know, this December and next March. And then, you know, you only have to sell through another 8 million to reach 33 million. And that's not a lot. 8 million is a lot of systems, yes. But for how much time it looks like Nintendo Switch has left in its life, I definitely think that's going to happen. Especially, you don't have... A giant price drop yet on either model you've had different ways to get a Nintendo switch for less money in Japan you know you could order one without the dock and without joy cons and stuff like that you could obviously wait for a holiday bundle and whatnot but official price drop to take advantage hasn't happened yet the Nintendo switch plus hasn't come out yet you still have big software like the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's successor, a few new Pokemon games, Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Now, a couple of those games aren't going to light Japan on fire or anything, but uh, a few of them are definitely going to do well. 3D Mario, new one, potentially. Mario Kart 9, could you imagine? Then there are franchises that haven't been used in a while. Nintendogs, could we see that? Uh, you know, some of it, like I said, is speculation, but of what we know that's going to come out, I think it's going to help Nintendo reach 33 million in Japan and we're going to have a new king over there. And like I said before, I think Nintendo Switch is going to become the number one best-selling console worldwide, not just Japan. I'm thinking that it's going to be the, the system to hit 160 million. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. What's the ceiling and what's the floor for you on Nintendo Switch, both in Japan and worldwide? I certainly think it's going to hit 33 in Japan, because if it could get to 25 by March next year, doing 8 million between April 1st, 2022, and the next few years is really easy. I mean, you could have some pretty serious drops and it will still probably hit 33 in Japan. Unless Nintendo decides to cut it short and release a Nintendo Switch to kind of premature and thus keeping their business momentum going forward with a new console, but cutting off Nintendo Switch's uh, lifetime sales, which I don't think they're gonna do, especially as Nintendo Switch becomes more affordable to make from a manufacturing level, the profit margin is going to increase on systems sold. So you're gonna wanna uh, sell those. And the games are already done. You've already made profit on all of these games. So why not try to release the system, keep it lasting long, still support it with some software coming out, even into the Nintendo Switch 2's eventual lifespan. Hmm. 
Cool talk. All right. Thanks for watching. This is PGN signing out. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. Let me know what you thought of today's conversation on the Famitsu sales, The Last of Us, Free Radical Design coming back with new time splitters, and I'll catch you all later. Take it easy.